going everybody it is january 16th 2019 uh if you haven't already read the title we're going to be talking about yellowstone today and before i get into this i'm gonna let you know if you if you're a new listener of mine uh the videos that i put out are unedited i do research i bring up my own stuff that i've written down you know it, it's I, I i try very hard not to be scripted i just like to go off the top of my head i like reading over articles uh, i feel like to me it's just better content now if you're not interested in that you're looking for what would be considered more professional uh, i'm sorry that's not what you're gonna really find here however you will still get the same information as if you would from another professional um creator so just bear with me i'm still here to give you facts just I just don't edit videos. If you want to be my editor, you know, feel free to comment or message me. Now, 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 here we are. We're looking at Yellowstone. I've seen uh, Dabu just put out a video actually talking about Yellowstone and that it's apparently imminently going to erupt very soon. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you, like I had told you guys, in I believe in August or July, it's nothing but fear baiting. You guys have nothing to worry about, and y you know, you're like, well, what could I possibly know? Well. I've done a lot of research, I've written down a lot of notes, and from what I'm looking at, it's no different than it was six, seven months ago. There's as much activity. Uh, Steamboat Geyser is acting up more. There is that. Um, but, okay, before I keep rambling, let's go ahead and read this article real quick. I was reading about Forbes. Um, where was it? Um... Well, I had it marked, but of course, when I come back on here, or go back on here, I can't find it. Oh, here we go. Yellowstone is indeed a super volcano, but as I've explained in detail here, that it doesn't mean that you probably think that's what it means. Uh, per the United States Geological Survey, USGS, any volcanic center that has an explosive, that has explosively erupted at least a thousand cubic kilometers of the fresh volcanic material in a sudden violent manner is, is a so-called super eruption after producing a huge depression crater named a caldera. Yellowstone has experienced two super eruptions in the last 2.1 million years, with the third not quite making the terms, cut the terms of a volume of a fresh eruptive debris it would unleash upon the world. These pyro, pyroisms is certainly devastated the surrounding landscape, but even if another were to happen today, civilization would be fine, shook perhaps as a part of the United States, rocked by a super powerful eruption, but still intact. More importantly, though, Yellowstone doesn't just blow its top like this. For most of its history, it is engaged in lava flow producing eruptions, or more commonly, hydrothermal blasts, both of which are considerably less threatening than a super eruption. Any future eruption or unrest, then, is far more likely to be of this type than any prototype apocalyptic. So, and it's about exactly what I'm saying, but I was saying that, uh, you know, last July. So, I'm gonna, I, have a lot of, I have some notes written down right here, and... For anyone who's out there who's actually concerned about Yellowstone, listen to what I'm going to say so you can take the notes and the research that I've taken and look. When you're looking at these charts, you can compare it. So the average pool temperature at Yellowstone is 140 to 170 degrees. Why are pool temperatures important? Because when the, well, the magma is rising, the pools underneath it are going to heat up. So you want to you want to know the temperature ranges. The pools get no hotter than 200 degrees. So when you start noticing uh, pools are getting super hot, that could be a sign of rising magma in the area. The average earthquake yearly is one to three thousand. The eruption count has been three previous times, as was just mentioned. Um, the ground subsiding average is two to three centimeters a year over the entire caldera. Um, so I have a couple of these, uh, so a couple of geysers you may want to keep an eye on. We have Steamboat Geyser, which is the tallest active geyser. Uh, it can erupt for anywhere from 3 to 40 minutes at a time, and it, the, the eruptions go from 10 to uh, 300 feet. Uh, we have the Constant Geyser, which is, oh, before I move on, Steamboat Geyser erupts at 144 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, constant geyser erupts at 65 Celsius. It's about a 10 second eruption. It goes about 10 or about 20 to 30 feet. Um, one second. Okay, so one area you want to keep an eye on, and one that I had mentioned in my previous videos is the Norris Geyser Basin, which is home to the Steamboat Geyser, which was mentioned is a weak zone of the Yellowstone. Uh, caldera it is one of the weaker points of the entire uh, volcano so if there's going to be an eruption if there's going to be something that's happening it's going to happen in the north uh, 
Norse guys are basin. Okay, guys? Um, turn this over real quick. And I had also done a debunk video of someone claiming that the Yellowstone was going to end the world. So if you haven't seen that video as well, I don't know how to exactly link videos like other YouTubers do. But if you just go through my video history, you will see the my I have like two or three other videos talking about Yellowstone, and maybe you'll find them interesting. So um, one common question, or what people some people want to know: How long has the cold air been rising in Yellowstone? And starting in 2004. Um, scientists saw that the ground above has risen about, about 2.8 inches a year. But that is in 2004, so it's about as recent as I have. Uh, if you don't know, uh, yeah, volcanoes in general breathe. They inflate and they deflate. The ground arise, rises and then uh, falls. The ground has risen and fallen for thousands of years without eruptions. So don't think just because the ground is rising by so much there's an there's a imminent eruption coming. Uh, it also deflates for around 15,000 years. This is when this is the cycles. Around every 15,000 years is a cycle of inflation and deflation. The caldera rose 7 inches between 1976 and 1984 before dropping 5.5 inches over the next decade. So, as I said, it will rise, it will fall. So it's not always a, a, a indication that the ground or that the volcano is imminently erupting or there's something coming it, it, it breathes the volcano has to breathe um there's magma chambers close to the surface otherwise you know there wouldn't be hydrothermal activity in general so there is magma somewhat close to the surface which is why you have your geysers in the first place the last full-scale eruption happened at lava creek which is 640,000 years ago it ejected nearly 240 cubic miles of rock, dust, and ash into the sky. Um, it's been three super eruptions, as the Forbes article mentioned. I've mentioned earlier, but I'll name them off for you if you don't know them. We had the Huckleberry Ridge that occurred uh, 2.1 million years ago. We had the Mesa Falls, which occurred 1.3 million years ago. And we also have Lava Creek eruption, which occurred 630,000 years ago. Yellowstone hotspot is currently under the Yellowstone Plateau. Now, we'll go ahead and, I was looking at the earthquakes, which we're on USGS right now, and it's, I mean, it's really nothing really alarming, in my opinion. I've looked at the temperature gauges, which we'll kind of click around, but one, I have been a big, just somewhat a, a critic of USGS and why they do not provide INSAR radars for Yellowstone. Uh, if you're a subscriber of mine, if you watch any of my previous videos, I'm a big fan of INSAR radars. When we were covering Kilauea and Mauna Loa, we were using the INSARs, which allow us to see how much the ground is rising and how much it's falling, which is very crucial to a Yellowstone or to any volcano site in general. Uh, they do have, when you go to Google, for example, and you type in Yellowstone INSARs, there are INSARs, but you are unable, for some reason, to get live updated insar maps of yellowstone unlike i was with uh kilauea and hawaii i was able to get day or usually about every four three four days i would get an update of the radar so i can see how much the ground is moving how much is falling and stuff like that which is very important but you do not get that with usgs with yellowstone and i'm not sure why um call me a conspiracy theorist i don't know but i just find it that's one thing i don't understand they don't provide to the people who they claim to give us all this material to do research, but when you actually start doing research, you understand you don't have all the tools you need to actually do it properly. Um, but, you know, it's probably like that for a good reason. Now, um, check these thermometers. Where was this? This is by the spring. Actually, I think I have this written down too. Hold on. So one thing, it's kind of hard for me to check all these because I don't have all these written down. You want to, but when you're checking, look up each spring, look up each location with the temperature gauges. Write down, try to figure out what the normal, um, what the normal temperature is. So here's constant geyser, which I do have written down. Um, by what I said, it erupts about 65 Celsius. So right now, it's not actually at a peak rate yet. So whenever when it starts getting higher, and actually this isn't even, this isn't even updated, so can't really look. But um, every time it hits about 65 Celsius, it erupts. So it's one good way you can keep track of these. But I suggest you look up the temperature ranges for every single of uh, these geyser spots, the pools. It's something you should know. Um, also, gas emissions. If you see gas emissions popping out, gas emissions are another sign of increased volcanism and that, you know, it, it's seeping. It's getting closer to the surface. More gas is coming out from the ground. Um, 
I do not want to make this video too long. Um, but from looking at the radars and there's, I look at these earthquakes. There's not, they're pretty scattered out throughout the park. There's nothing over here in North. Uh, this is uh, Norse. Uh, wow, guys are basin. Sorry, guys. Um, and this is where a lot of the activity you would see, since this is the weak spot of the park. And I'm not really seeing too much. Now, and all the same with the magnitude range and the depths. The magnitudes, you know, when you start getting, you know, bigger earthquakes around fours, and the mat and the depth as well. I don't know off the top of my head with the depth. So when you're looking at volcanoes, guys, you want to keep an eye on the depth range of the lava chamber under the volcano, because where the earthquake occurs you can determine if that's a surface earthquake if it's magma rising or if it's been activity within the actual lava chamber itself it makes determining what's going on at at the site of the volcano much easier so i hope you take some of the tips i'm laying out and if you're an actual researcher if you're someone who's you know you're not you didn't go to school for this or you're someone who just wants to do independent research take what i'm saying write some of the stuff down um, I can put out more videos if you guys are interested in this. I don't like people who fear monger. I just want to give you the truth. And to me, and from looking at the evidence that we've seen, this is nothing different from the past couple, you know, six or seven months ago. It, it may, uh, Steamboat Geyser is getting more excessive. It is blowing up more and more bigger chunks out of the ground, which is alarming. But it is not in game. That is not, just because that geyser is going off constantly does not mean the eruption is going to happen in a year doesn't mean it's going to happen five years this could be another 100 200 years of a building up process um but again it's it we don't know we just that's that's why we pay attention to these things so uh, i'm going to end this video now feel free to drop a like share if you have any questions please drop them below and i'll try to answer them to the best of my ability but now you guys have a great day